Howdy y'all from Texas. It's Timmy. <laughs> I figured out I can zoom once I start recording. All of the focus is crap. But still, I thought I'd play around with it because I always want the flag to be all like close up when I start it. So anyways, welcome. Thanks for joining me. <sighs> Thanks for joining me on this lovely evening. We're going to do a psalm and we're going to do prayer. We'll see how the spirit moves us. We got the daily or evening devotional. That should be interesting. If it's anything piggybacking off of what's been happening in the last couple days, it should be really cool. Earlier's um, prayer call was awesome, actually. Uh, I think I titled it like A Lot of Gotti Confirmed. And so it's like all the confirmations that are popping up are awesome. Uh-oh, there's the B A beast. It's not the burrito hating beast. But let's see if the other two dogs come out because they're a lot more hardcore than that little guy. Uh, anyways, it's got chicken on it. Cause it's, oh, oh, don't hurt me, bro. <laughs> What's up with these? <laughs> That dog never wants to be my friend. But if you turn your back on that dog, it'll come running after you too. I got a feeling it'd bite my ankle if I let it. <laughs> but the video from earlier, it was, um, there's a whole bunch of funny, uh, Illuminati confirmed videos, which are kind of making fun of some things. But there's one where it's got like KFC is Illuminati or something. And it's got the, uh, it's got the, uh, Colonel Sanders with the uh, Illuminati glasses on. Hey buddy, I'm not Illuminati, I promise. Don't eat me. Cookie. So, I thought it was funny. I thought it was really funny, so I spent a long time photoshopping the little chicken picture. And then I totally forgot I mentioned chicken in the video, so. But there's some good knowledge and wisdom and information in there. The proverbs were awesome, but there were so many confirmations it wasn't even funny. Cookie! Cookie! Pokey! <laughs> They're like, oh, this guy's weird. Which he is. Very, very weird. Howdy! <laughs> that dog's still standing in the middle of the street, like... We got us a Mexican standoff. <laughs> okay, sorry. That's when you're at a standstill and nobody, you know. Nobody move. Nobody get hurt. <laughs> yeah. Giddy up. <laughs> That's cool. Cookie. Howdy! Yeah, that's what I was hoping. <laughs> hey, if y'all are out, I'll come out. I'll come by in just a few minutes. All right. That's Phyllis. I love Phyllis. So I try not to get run over, but Cookie. Pookie! 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 Smell that hand. <laughs> Pretty horses. Oh, he whipped me with his tail. That was funny. Cookie. Cookie. I love her eye. Her blue eye. Oh, that's good. That's healing really well. I think she hit her head on the, um, on the corner of the barn or something. He likes to give her a hard time every now and then. 
Come on. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> Cookie. Good girl. <laughs> I love doing that, although some of y'all probably tell me I get my fingers bit off. Oh yeah. We got some book markers. So yeah, sorry. I don't really have a lot to say today. I'm just still kind of in awe from earlier. It was an awesome experience. I had a wizard. I think the cicada killer was there. Or that might have been yesterday. Couldn't see it anyhow. Uh, the cardinal more than once, which was weird. I think it's really cool. Okay, so... I hate the selfies. I just wanted y'all to know that again. So... Yeah, anyways, let's just get to it. I'm gonna go say what's up to Phyllis. Um, okay. So yeah, I mentioned I got the... We live in a pretty big town. I mean, for a small town, it's a pretty big town. I mentioned I got the package from Sweden I was so excited to get from my special someone and her mother. And uh, what was really cool about it was... Actually, it's connected, but it's not. But anyway, I had to call the post office for something. For a passport, and uh, you know, I might have had to track the package, but uh, when I went to call the post office, Phyllis answered the phone. I thought it was really cool. Like, what are the odds? It's a small world. They're they're excited today. I love it. So hot. I don't see how they have all that energy, but I'm not complaining. <sighs> okay, I'll take those off since they're not gonna stay on my face, anyways. Um, but yeah, so it was like, uh, synchronicity. You can pay attention to these things and they line up. Nothing, coincidence, the word coincidence is coincide. So, when something coincides with something else, yeah, it's coincidental. But, and the, you know, that's, that's the technical definition. So, yeah, I believe in coincidence, technically. But I don't believe anything happens by accident. I'm not saying accidents don't happen, but nothing's by luck. Cookie! She is excited today. Uh, they were, they were, I don't even know the word for it. Neighing? She was neighing when I was over there. When the dog started getting antsy. I think she saw the dog picking on me and was getting protective. Me and Cookie kind of have a thing, so. But yeah, so, I coincidentally had Phyllis answer the phone for the, uh, oh, uh, post office. So I thought it was really cool, actually. And I was like, uh, Phyllis? And she was like, yes. And I was like, this is Timmy. And she was all like, uh, who? And I said, Timmy. And Tim Castleberry. And she's like, oh, hey, Tim. And she was really busy. They're always busy at the post office. But we talked for a couple of minutes, and she helped me with my stuff. But I just thought, like, of all the people that could answer the phone, what are the odds it'd be her? Um, so, yeah, anyway, sorry to go off topic about that, but... I haven't got to talk to her in a while, so. So we got Mark chapter 16, verse 9 for the devotional. And it says, He appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. Yeah. I wish she had a little more room to run. She gets out, and she doesn't just stay here all the time. She was gone for a week or two. Y'all y'all remember that. So, I've never seen her this excited. Ooh. And she's getting after it over there. Our horses need a lot of room, so... I wish they had more over here, but they don't, so... So, yeah, anyways. He, speaking of Jesus, appeared to Mary Magdalene first, out of whom he had cast seven devils, from Mark 16... Chapter 16, verse 9. And it says, Mary Magdal Magdala, or Magdalene, or 
Mary Magdala was the victim of a fearful evil. She was possessed by not one devil only, but seven. These dreadful inmates caused much pain and pollution to the poor frame in which they had found a lodging. Hers was a hopeless, horrible case. She could not help herself, neither could any human succor avail. But Jesus passed that way, and unsaw it, he probably even resisted by the poor demoniac. Okay, so, but Jesus passed that way, and unsaw it, and probably even resisted by the poor demoniac, the person that's possessed. He uttered the word of power, and Mary of Magdala became a trophy of the healing power of Jesus. All the seven demons left her, left her never to return forcibly ejected by the Lord of all. What a blessed deliverance. What a happy change. From delirium to delight, from despair to peace, from hell to heaven. Straightway she became a constant follower of Jesus, catching his every word, following his de his following his devious steps. I guess he did deviate from the world's path, but it's an odd word choice. Um, sharing his toilsome life, and withal, she became his generous helper. First among that band of healed and grateful women who ministered unto him of their substance, when Jesus was lifted up in crucifixion, Mary remained the sharer of his shame. We find her first beholding from afar, and then drawing near to the foot of the cross. She could not die on the cross with Jesus, but she stood as near it as she could. And when his blessed body was taken down, she watched to see how and where it was laid. She was the faithful and watchful believer. Last at the sepulcher where Jesus slept, first at the grave whence he rose. Her holy fidelity made her a favored beholder of her beloved Rabboni, or rabbi, or teacher, uh, who deemed, deigned, okay, who deigned to call her by her name, and to make her his messenger of good news to the trembling disciples and Peter. Thus grace found her a maniac. She's, he's picking some odd word choices. Thus grace found her a maniac and made her a minister. Okay, so she was a maniac, demonized, and possessed when Grace found her, but it made her a minister. It cast out devils and gave her to behold angels, delivered from Satan, and united her forever to the Lord Jesus. May I also be such a miracle of grace. Wow. So we've talked quite a bit about there's no... no thing you could ever do that would take you so far away from God that you can't receive grace if you have faith to believe. Nothing you've ever done in your life can be so bad that God can't forgive you. In fact, He's already forgiven you if you'll just receive it. He's already saved you if you'll just receive it. And you receive it in faith. And its grace is something we don't deserve. Um, so wow, that's, that's powerful. Um, if you're a non-believer, you can be possessed. And you can have one, seven, I think it was six thousand in the Legion. So you can have a lot of demons, a lot of devils, a lot of unclean spirits. Um, and we can open gateways and doors to these things in our lives, which is not a good thing to do, obviously. Um, but... With the power of Christ and the blood, the shedding of the blood, it's the blood that's where the power and the life is, is at. So we have to remember the authority that we wield when we are of Christ. We're literally sons and daughters of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And how much power does a king, how much power does a king's son or daughter have? A lot more than the peasants, right? Uh, a lot more than the people out of the city gates. So, if you think about that, we have to think and believe on a kingdom level, not just a, a house level, not just a street level, not just a 
block level, not just a city level, not just a state level, not just a uh, nation level. We have to think not on a on a global or world level. We have to think on a kingdom level, on a, he a level of heaven, heaven's kingdom, like where God's the most high God. We have to try to think from the most high perspective. And that's not an easy thing to do, so. But when we realize that we're eternal, that we have eternal life through Christ, that we'll be reigning with Him as kings and queens, um, it's an amazing prospect, really. But we can already begin our journey now. We can already begin our exercising of that power. We can use those things for God's glory. So, I don't know. That's pretty impressive, really. So, when you're a believer, you cannot be possessed. You're, Jesus redeemed you, which means he possesses and owns you. And then he sets you free. So, that's a pretty amazing thing. Imagine being bought into slavery, and then the guy that buys you says, oh, Okay, well, now that I bought you and I own you, you're free to go. And we're already in bondage and slaves to sin. That master will never let you go, so... When you really consider the grace and mercy of God... I mean, Jesus is basically like the Son of God, only begotten of the Father that comes, finds you, seeks you out, buys you with the, His own sacrifice, and then from that point, says, okay, well, I'm gonna, instead of sleeping in the slaves' quarters out back, I'm just gonna go ahead and let you have the master bedroom in my house. You can take my bedroom, it's cool. I'll sleep on the couch. You know? Uh, I mean, it's awesome, really, when you think about it. Then you become part of the household. You become a co-heir with him. How many slaves do you know became co-heirs with their masters? At best, they usually get set free. Or they get taken care of for life for the work that they do. Uh, very rarely will you find somebody who just gets let go. Jesus doesn't let you go ever. God doesn't let you go. He lets you come with Him. Just even better. Okay, we're going to read 40 and 41. How about that? <clears throat> Psalm chapter 40 says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. And he has put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is that man or woman that makes the Lord their trust, and respects not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord my God, are thy many. Okay, sorry. Verse five says, "Many, O Lord my God, are your wonderful works which you have done, and your thoughts which are to usward." Or toward us they cannot be reckoned up in order unto you if I would declare and speak of them they are more than can be numbered sacrifice and offering you did not desire my ears have you opened burnt offering and sin offering has has have you not required now, this is odd this is Old Testament when they did burnt offerings for atonement this is when they did um, sin offerings. So, this is David, Psalm, more than likely David himself, or one of his closest uh, confidants. With sacrifice and offering you did not desire. Now, that's interesting, because think about Cain and Abel, right? Cain's offering was not accepted, right? Uh, Abel's offering was accepted, and I'm not going to go into much detail about this because I could talk a long time about it, but 
in this situation, you know, I think about it. I can't really ever remember where God says He desires the offering. He accepts the offerings. That's it. That's a, there's a big difference between accepting something as acceptable. Now, okay, well, that's acceptable. That's that's pleasant. Thank you. Right. But this is saying desire. If God desires these things, maybe the requirements are necessary, not necessarily a desire. You know, and that that puts a whole new spin and context on a lot of Old Testament things. And I look at the Hebrew root people. I would be curious to know what some of those guys would interpret this scripture as having a value. <laughs> Amen, Cookie. That's so cool. Okay, so sacrifice and offering you did not desire. My ears have you opened. Burnt offering and sin offering have you not required. Cookie. Cookie. Now God didn't desire those things. Maybe he just required them. There's a difference. So verse 7 says, Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me, I delight to do your will, O my God. Yes, your law is within my heart. Ooh, that tickles. <laughs> okay, I delight to do your will, O my God. Yes, your law is within my heart. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Noah was a preacher of righteousness, if I'm not mistaken. Lo, I have not refrained my lips, O Lord, you know. I have not hid your righteousness. Dude, if that's a spider, I'm going to wig out. Because this is I've been seeing spiders all day long. There was one on my phone. Oh, where'd it go? Yes, it's a huge... Well, it's about that big, but it's real wiry, so you can't see it, and it blends in perfect with the dirt. There was this, the wolf spider on the Bible earlier today. There was this, like, weird-looking translucent white one on my phone. Uh, there was another one somewhere else, and then this one here just crossed under my feet. Which I'm surprised I saw it without my glasses on, because it pretty much blinds a bat without them. More confirmations, right? Oh, good lord. So she neighed at the reiteration of this scripture. Um, when I mentioned Noah being the preacher of righteousness, of not hiding, declared your faithfulness and your... Okay, so I think when I mentioned the Noah thing is when the spider was walking around. These are things... Those are the co coinciding synchronicities that we should pay attention to because they might have a value of you know apples in the scripture oranges in the nature but together apples and oranges make a nice fruit cocktail or well, fruit salad so okay so i delight to do your will oh my god yes your law is within my heart i have preached righteousness in the great congregation lo i have not refrained my lips oh lord you know I have not hid your righteousness within my heart. I have declared your faithfulness and your salvation. Hmm. I have not concealed your loving kindness and your truth from the congregation or from the great congregation. Withhold not you your tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let your loving kindness and your truth continually preserve me. For innumerable evils have compassed me about. Mine, my iniquities have taken hold upon me, so that I am not able to look up. When you're ashamed, it's hard to look up to God when you know you're doing wrong. And if David's sitting here saying his iniquities have taken hold upon him, that's a stronghold. So he's not able to look up. They are more than the hairs of my head. Therefore my heart fails me. So he sins more than his hair, more than he has hairs on his head. That's, if you were to number them, that's pretty humbling. If 
for him to admit that. Because that's a hard thing to be honest with yourself when you're doing wrong. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Okay, so Jesus just delivered Mary and that seven devils. And here we're asking the Lord to deliver us just like David's asking for it to be pleasing to the Lord to deliver us. And to hurry up and help us. Make haste. So it doesn't hurt to ask God to speed it, speed it up. But you're asking, not telling, right? So let them be ashamed and confounded together that seek after my soul to destroy it. Let them be driven backwards and put to shame that wish me evil. Let them be desolate for a reward of their shame that say unto me, Aha, aha. Let all those that seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let such as love your salvation say continually, The Lord is magnified. But I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinks upon me. You are my help and my deliverer. Make no tarrying, O oh my God. Psalm 41. Blessed is he that considers the poor. This is piggy... This is piggybacking off of this morning. We talked about the Levitical priesthood when they were corrupted. They were not taking care of the poor with their extra measure. And the Lord was not magnified. Their pocketbooks were. And their fancy clothes. Um, so the uh, blessed is he that considers the poor. The Lord will deliver him in the time of trouble. The Lord will... The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive, and he shall be blessed upon the earth. And thou will not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. And you, talking to God, and you will not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing, or wasting away. You will make all of his bed in his sickness. I said, Lord, be merciful unto me, heal my soul, for I have sinned against you. My enemies speak evil of me. When shall he die and his name perish? That's what his enemies are saying. And this could be when David's at the end of his life, sick on his, sick on his deathbed. Uh, my enemies speak evil of me. And they, you know, it doesn't say this, but it's, a, it's they say, when shall he die? And his... Yes, and his name perish. There's a lot of people that couldn't wait for David to die. Just think about if you want to be somebody special and you got somebody extra special in ahead of you in line. Well, hurry up and die, man. That's so cool. And if he comes to see me, he speaks vanity. His heart gathers iniquity to itself. When he goes abroad, he tells it. All that hate me whisper together against me, and against me do they devise my hurt. An evil disease, they say, cleaves fast unto him, and now that he lies, he shall rise up no more. So now that he's laid down in his sick bed, in his deathbed, well, he's got his disease because he was evil anyways. Job was accused of the same thing. Um, oh, you had to have sinned. You had to have done something evil. That's why you're getting afflicted with this, with these sores and the sickness and all that. His enemies are basically accusing him of being evil, and that's why he's having a hard time at the end of his life. Uh, yes, my own familiar friend in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, has lift up his heel against me. Okay, there's a custom uh, in the old... Hebrew and Jewish culture to where if you were to go into a house and they were not hospitable and hospitality was a really big thing entertaining guests and cookie it was important that you took care of your guests and if somebody was inhospitable uh, or did something really wrong you would curse though you would curse them but not in the sense of oh, okay now it's like voodoo um, you would go out of the house, and when you went out of the house, think of it this way. When they had the Passover, they put the blood of the lamb, you know, the Passover lamb, they put it on the lintel of the door. That's the top of the door and on the side, the door jam, basically, or frame, whatever you want to call it. And uh, that was so that the angel of the Lord wouldn't kill their firstborn. 
Now, that's the good one. The bad one would be if you didn't have that on there, then, you know, wasn't good for you. But the custom of this cursing to knock the dust off your heels, right? It says that his friend that ate at his own table, that, you know, he thought he, that he, thought he was friends. Uh, he kicked his heel on, you can, he raised his heel against him is what it said in the scripture. But in the custom, if you were to be inhospitable, you would leave out of the house and you would kick your heel on the door on your way out. And that was to knock the dust off your heel, but it was also kind of like a, a symbolic gesture. You know, we have a few that are not as nice in our culture. I could think of one with the middle finger. I could think of... <laughs> yeah. I could think of a few of those. Um, Cookie. That's my girl. Cookie. So when his friend lifted a heel against him, he cursed him, basically. I'm not saying this friend kicked his heel on the door, but... That was what good guys did. Was they knocked the dust off their heel. Symbolically to say, these guys aren't God. This house isn't a godly house. So, an evil disease, yada yada. Yea, my own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, has lift up his heel against me. See, so yeah, one who shared the king's table was his friend, ate his bread, uh, was an honored as well as a trusted friend. Reference may be to one who had sealed his friendship by a covenant. For Jesus' use of this verse and application to himself, you can go to John 13, 18, in fulfilling the role of his royal ancestor as God's anointed king over Israel, the great son of David, also experienced the hostility of men and the betrayal of a trusted associate and thus fulfilled his forefathers' lament. Okay, I was hoping to talk about the heel raising, but... So, has lift up his heel against me. Verse 10. But you, O Lord, be merciful unto me, and raise me up, that I may require them. By this I know that you have favored me, or I know that, yeah, you favored me, because my enemy does not triumph over me. And as for me, you uphold me in my integrity, and set me before your face forever. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, from everlasting and to everlasting. Amen. And amen. That's so cool. Okay. Heavenly Father, we just come before you. Uh, humbling ourselves in prayer. And we thank you for the opportunity to even be able to speak to you direct. Thank you for bending your ear to hear us. And to um, heed your servants' cries and calls. And we call on the name of the Lord. Father, the Most High God of Israel, when we just praise you and glorify you, and the Lord be magnified from everlasting to everlasting. We thank you so much for loving us the way that you do, for caring for us the way that you do, and for giving us the opportunity to love you back. loud so I think the donkeys are over there eating at somebody's house and that might be them talking to each other from far away that's so crazy oh thank you God for your power and your majesty and your, and your authority God and we just uh, we love you so much this has been an awesome awesomely glorious day if there's that even a way to say it or put it but uh, I'm very humbled and honored God, that you would uh, show me the things you showed me today and allow me to document these things as we go. And for those that are experiencing this with me, um, thank you for showing them as well and revealing to them the things that are of the Spirit. Uh, thank you for opening the eyes and the ears and the hearts and the minds. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for your sacrifice and for the shedding of your blood. Thank you for being the lamb that we needed. Um, I just pray that you walk with us and, and show us how we can please you better, God. I've sinned and my iniquities uh, outnumbered the hairs on my head, God. So please make haste to deliver me from my, my own devices.
in my own afflictions, in my own sins, my own lusts and desires of the flesh, God. Help me to see the, the way out of temptation whenever I am to be tempted. But let us never say we're tempted of the Lord. Let us always realize that it's either our flesh or a snare of the enemy. God, and, uh, help us to discern our enemies better in real time. Help us to discern more quickly um, the ways to navigate through hard times. Help us always to remember to call on you and to call on the name of the Lord because you are the God of our salvation. But please save us from the hands of our enemies. Save us from the snares. Save us from the... Um, not the trials and tribulations. Help us through those times, but help save us from creating more trouble for ourselves. And help us not walk into the den of the harlots of this world. Help us, fo help us focus and lean on wisdom. We'd rather go eat at her table. Um... We just love you so much, Father God. I'm going to be quiet and be still and know that you are the Lord. All these things we offer to you in humility, long-suffering, um, in authority and power, but also in meekness and in a contrite spirit and heart, God. Because my heart's heavy with truth, and my heart's heavy with love, and my heart's heavy for this world. And it's, um, judgment's coming. And wrath is to follow. So God, help us prepare ourselves as best we can to be able to pass through that fire as smoothly as possible. Our God is an all-consuming fire. So let us begin the purification process now so that we don't have to go through the heat as fervently. Amen.